The Selfish Podcast acknowledges the traditional owners of the land and waters that this podcast is recorded on. Are you overwhelmed? Stuck in survival mode? Do you need to focus more on self and be selfish? Hey, beautiful people, it's Chloe and Steph, your hosts of The Selfish Podcast. Join us on our introspective journey as we explore alternative healing treatments. We're on a mission to soothe our mind, body and soul. What really works? How can we get it together? And what do we need to thrive? Through deep conversations and personal experiences, we tackle everything from face mapping to breath work and more. It's time to prioritise yourself and your well-being. Subscribe now and get ready to put yourself first with The Selfish Podcast. Hey, 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 beautiful people, and welcome to this week's episode of The Selfish Podcast with Chloe and Steph. How are you today, Chloe? I'm feeling great, Steph. How are you? Feeling a bit dusty. To be <laughs> yeah, true. Feeling Let's be honest, a little dusty, yeah. So Why was, are you feeling dusty? Well, it was my birthday mm. on the weekend mm. yeah. um, and we went out with a few other gals mm-hmm. on the Saturday to... A beautiful champagne lunch, and let's just say we drank a lot of champagne. So much champagne. So much champagne. And it was absolutely delicious. It was so good. Mm-hmm. Billy Cart, my favourite, and then we just mm-hmm. had a bit of a girls' night, which was so much fun. Hilarious. So much fun. Many laughs. Many laughs. Many mm-hmm. laughs were had. And it's been interesting. I think your birthday is always a time when you reflect on the year, mm-hmm. um, reflect on your life, what's coming up. And personally, I mean, my last two birthdays, I really just they were so painful mm-hmm. so painful because any important date mm-hmm. is hard when you're missing someone in your life so um yeah the first birthday without Arthur I was just like everyone can fuck off mm-hmm. and I got really you know quite upset because it wasn't a happy day and all the rest and that was probably the start of my unraveling mm-hmm. um last year I was heavily pregnant with Freddie And just holding on for dear life, hoping, 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 hoping that the next birthday I'll have um, my baby in my arms. Mm. So this birthday, I'm just so grateful, you know, so grateful to be here, so grateful Mm -hmm. to have, you know, everyone in my life who's in my life. And I thought, fuck it, it's not a special birthday, but let's celebrate. And And it was so beautiful. Such a beautiful mix of women. Yeah. It we was, all felt re- pretty powerful, I think. Yeah. Oh, it was we a like, powerful group. It was My like God. a really, yeah, really enigmatic, is that the word? Enigmatic mm-hmm. group. Yeah. 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 But all felt safe, I think, to be ourselves and just show up authentically, mm-hmm. which doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, agree, agree. And one of our beautiful friends organised hair and makeup yeah. for everyone, which was also amazing because you... So amazing. Because you, you know, I, since, you know, I was just thinking about this last night, like I haven't really felt sexy mm-hmm. or seen in mm. that way for such a long time. Yep. And that was always sort of part of my identity. I always, you know, was happy with how I looked and mm-hmm. felt really comfortable. Comfortable, Comf- comfortable, and confident. Com- mm-hmm. And I haven't With felt like that for a long word. time. Yeah, <laughs> comfortable. Don't. I don't know. I don't know what I was saying. But yeah, I. And it was nice yeah. just to get back into that feeling. Step into that. Step into it. Mm. Yeah. Get dressed up. Feel yeah. good. Look good. Um, Drink great champagne. Yeah. Good food. Great bunch of women. Yep. It exactly. all kind of came together, didn't yeah. it, to like yeah. kind of set the scene for an awesome, fun night. Yes. And a few people sort of said, oh, was it a special birthday? And I'm like, nah. 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 It was a birthday, but every birthday is special. You never know. You and know. I think it was special for you. Well, it was. Having come off the back of these like previous two years, for you, you felt prior to this that you wanted to really celebrate. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so not special in terms of the years, the but a very special in terms of I feel like, I felt like part, like, you know, every, you know, so often, or not every so often, mm. but I feel like I'm continuing to grow into this new person that I mm. am and this new space that I am. And this was a big signal that I actually wanted to do it and say, yeah, let's just. Mm. We'll open up to that and step into that new sense of self. Yeah. And part of me was like, oh, Steph, like these people won't want to do this and it will be like, how selfish of you. Well, you know what? Yeah, it is selfish. It is self-indulgent. And that's not a bad thing. No. No, we all wanted to be there with you. Yeah. You could, we, I could, I think I'm speaking for the other women. 
open. There was none of us that said no. No, no, I no, think no. We were all like a hell yes. Yeah, everyone was a hell yes. Yeah, everyone was, was a brilliant. hell yes, which, brilliant was, which was awesome. But I did have a bit of that doubt beforehand going, oh, well, you know, mm. it's a bit extravagant. But you know what? I think we have these times in our lives and we should celebrate. We should celebrate ourselves. We should mm-hmm. celebrate our lives. You know, Arthur will never get to turn mm. 36. He'll never get to turn one, two, three, four. True. So every year, mm. and, I, and I haven't been able to appreciate that until now, mm. every year I'm just so grateful for that. We've got Freddie's first birthday coming up as well. Yep. And again, just so feel so honoured that that mm. we are all here to celebrate. To celebrate. To celebrate life. That has really stuck with me because I'm not one to celebrate my birthday, but I'm going to fucking celebrate it next year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We could do a half so birthday celebration. But Let's that's the thing. It. People sort of hate it when people shy away. Like, oh, yeah. I'm getting old. It's like you, it's a privilege to grow old. Yes. It's it, a privilege to have another year. Correct. Yeah. It is such a privilege. Yeah. Let's change and that And that is thought. something that mm. Arthur has given me and Hugh, the two... Two massive gifts he's, he's given us. One is the gift of perspective mm-hmm. because our perspective is forever mm-hmm. altered in a way that makes us so much more grateful for mm-hmm. everything that we have in this life. And also just don't sweat the, sh- the small stuff. doesn't matter. So it's the, it's the, uh, the perspective and also the, um, which I suppose leads into the gratitude as mm-hmm. well, the gratitude for, you know, breathing in this air mm-hmm. and being in this world. And experiencing all yeah. the things that life provides and yep. gives. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So it was nice just to sort of, yeah, just take a moment and go, you know what, the last two years, two and a bit years have been, you know, pretty fucked up, but I'm here, I'm alive mm. <laughs> and I'm living and I'm slowly reopening mm. in a different way, you know, different mm. parts of me. Awakening. Yeah. Maybe? Awakening. Yes. Mm. I like that. Yeah. A, a reawakening. Re- Reawakening, yeah. It's very potent. Yeah, and it was just, yeah, nice to feel like, you know, that part of my old self mm. has sort of come through. It's transformed mm-hmm. in a different way, but it's there. Mm. And I was really nervous in the lead up to it. I was like, oh, my God, I've not done this like f- since pre-COVID. Yeah. What am I going to be like? What's every, like, it was just, you know, and stepping mm. back into an unknown, but I thought, no, and I spoke about it with Huey. Mm-hmm. It's like, babe, you'll be fine. Bless you. <laughs> Sweet girl. You'll be fine. Aww. You'll be fine. So, yeah, we were fine. We had yeah. a great evening. It was brilliant. It was the best, honestly. The great best. day, great night. Yeah. Had some great makeup. You should actually, everyone needs to go onto Instagram. We'll post a photo of us. Yes. Because Chloe's I think we did. goth look. <laughs> It was goth, but... It was, you lent into a different side of yourself, mm, I feel. I think so. Yeah, I think I'm stepping into a new sense of self, for sure. You got the dark yeah. hair. The dark hair. I had the dark lips. I had some smoky eyes going on. Yeah. Yeah. It felt really good. And do brunettes have more fun? Bloody oh. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think that, yeah, I did. I Honestly, it was just a really fun night where, as I said, we were all just ourselves. There was no, no one was carrying or wearing a mask, mm. Mm. which is pretty special mm-hmm. when you can just be yourself. Yep. Mm-hmm. And let it down. Let it down. Yep. So, yeah, I'm so grateful for the night. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for being there. Pleasure. And, and showing up as you with that. Always now. Amazing lip. Amazing lip. Yep. It was... <laughs> It took a bit to get used to. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had our makeup done at 8.30 in the morning. I know. Our, so our, we were... our cool time was 8.30. <laughs> so we're like, yeah. We were still late to lunch. We were still late. Oh. On time. Right on time. Right on time. Right on time. Right on time. But it was, yeah, it was a very, mm. it was a, a day night of extravagance mm. in, a, in a really beautiful way. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so many loves. I love it. And Chloe, what's happening with the with the stars and the moon? With the stars. So there's actually going on this week. We've got oh sorry. We've got a new moon in Cancer coming up over the weekend. So this will be guiding us to connect with our soul and our heart space. So Mm. so beautiful. So it's a really perfect time for us to retreat within, take that time for yourself. 
and be selfish. Mm -hmm. I like it. But there's a couple of other big kind of movements or shifting energies that are coming into play too. Mm -hmm. So aside from the new moon, um, we have Mercury. Oh, whenever I think of Mercury, I think of that retrograde. Oh, yeah. So he's not in... Re- okay. He's not... He, he I'm, I'm saying that he, he... Yeah, they, yeah. They it, then pronouns for Mercury, it, please. It. It is not in retrograde, but it is um, moving into Leo. So Mercury is the planet of the mind and it rules how we think and process information and communicate. Mm. So it's a pretty powerful mm. one. Um, but it's moving into the heart-centered and passionate sign of Leo and... So we're going to kind of feel this energy of liveliness and empowering, amplifying um, our confidence and creativity. So we've probably felt a bit of a lull in many of these areas. Yes, yes. So now we're kind of going to feel this amp up like the okay. second part of the year, which I'm so excited about because I don't know about all of you. I don't know about you, Seth, but I've just been feeling a bit like dull. Yes. So I'm really excited about this. Um, so you can connect to this energy by openly communicating your thoughts, creating art without expectations, delving into all topics that you're passionate about. Okay, I like that. So that is with the new moon or that's Sorry, the... no, that was Mercury moving Sorry, yeah, into Mercury. Leo okay. and it will be so in Leo. So nothing to do with the new moon. It's just happening nothing. at the same time. Yep, from okay. the, during July 11th gotcha. until July 29th. So that's a big one. And then another big, like, big one is Mars is moving into Virgo from July 11th to August 28th. So Mars represents how we assert ourselves and take action. So it's a really fierce planet. Is that why men are from there? Because men are from Mars. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I've never read that book. (laughs) Have you read that book? (laughs) No, I've never read it. I think that I would resonate with it. Mm. I mean, we are different species, aren't we? Not really, but we are very different. Same, 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 but different, yeah. Um, So it's moving into the practical and detailed oriented sign of Virgo. So our motivation takes a really efficient turn. So use this energy to keep focused and productive. So this transit is all about ticking off your to-do list, planning for things in the coming months, Mm. finishing projects, taking mindful action, identifying things that may have been holding you back from your plans for the future. Oh, I like mm. this. I like this energy. This is exactly the type of energy that I need. I think that, I that need. we're all needing this. Yeah. Yeah, shift. Yep. Um, this beautiful information has come from Sisters Village, by mm. the way. Thank so you, we'll Sisters Village. Them. So, yeah, really energetic shifts that are happening um, along with the new moon. Yeah, and then we're also moving into Leo season in yeah. a few weeks as well. Yeah, we are. So I've got yeah. two Leos. I've got Freddie and Hugh are both Leos. Ooh, great. Great. So I look forward the in Lions. a few weeks to going into that one. Can't wait. Have you got any Leos? Uh, no Leos. Oh, um, Rafi is a Leo rising, I think. So he's like Gemini sun and moon and then a Leo rising. And from birth to seven, you really resonate with your rising sign. Oh. So I see that really like the Leo is about going first, like very fierce, passionate, you know, bubbly kind of energy, but they're leaders. So would you recommend, because I've never done mm. the rising and the, and I know we haven't done that on this mm. podcast in more detail mm. yet. Mm. Yeah, we can. No, I think it's something that everyone maybe, if you into astrology, then it's really good to look at those three and then there's so much more to and it And do it, as it well. for your family as well. Yeah, absolutely. Almost like human design. Yeah, gives so much insight. Yeah. yeah, love it. Love it, love it. Yeah. I like Amazing. All right, shall we jump into a card for the week? Yes, and you've shuffled this deck. It's pre-shuffled. What I might do is I might pick the card this week, but you can read what um, What it is. What it is. Okay. So we're taking a card this week from the Rebecca Campbell uh, Work Your Light Oracle Cards. We love a bit of Rebecca Campbell, don't we? She's so beautiful. Oh, Warrior Woman. Oh, Warrior Woman. Mm Mm-hmm. Have we had this one before? I think it was on that episode that we deleted. Ah. Oh, I, yeah, I think it was the first episode we did. Yeah. When, the first recording we did. We pulled her, I feel but like then this we... Is your, this is your woman. Past life, yeah. Yeah, your past life woman with her long hair, right. brown hair, black hair. How do hair. I find it? Is this alpha? Um, so just go to the front of the... Yeah, and then just find Warrior Woman. So um, the question here that it says is, have you answered your deepest calling? And we'll mm. give you some more information. 
Okay, you are here for a reason. You're being called to bravely pave a path. Have you answered your highest, deepest calling? Living a heart and soul led life is not all fluffy and smooth sailing. Mm. Living a heart and soul led life requires courage to triumph over fear. So often our fears are the gatekeepers to our greatest gifts. And the more resistance we have towards answering a call, the more important it is to our soul's growth. That's really interesting. Mm. The more resistance we have towards answering a call, the more important it is towards our soul's growth. Ooh. And um, I know that um, Kel from Hill Street Yoga, when mm. I was talking to her about growth and whatnot, she often talks about that. Like the resistance mm-hmm. is when you feel the most resistance, it's almost... You've got to push through it in order to get it, to the yeah. other side. Yep. And then that's where your growth will occur, yeah. the biggest growth. Yep. Mm. Sometimes fear is an indication that we are facing the right way. Joan of Arc was known for her courage and her famous line, I am not afraid I was born to do this. But the thing about courage is that it's not possible without fear. So if you are feeling afraid, what is needed is courage. And courage comes from le- living from the heart. Think of your fears as opportunities to expand rather than things that are holding you hostage. If you look at your fears in this light, then as uncomfortable as it might feel, it's actually a sign that you are on the right track. I just had full body shivers and I feel like crying. (laughs) That's really amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Fear is the signpost for course correction, mm. you know, like mm-hmm. keep going kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Not course correction, that's not the right word. That was shit. Don't listen to that. But <laughs> it's a really great sign for moving forward mm. Mm. if you step into it courageously. Bloody and you really. can't have courage without fear, hey? Mm. Now with your whole body tingles, mm. what is that a sign of? Someone was talking to you about this the other day. Well, I think for me it's I just step into like it's my guides kind of potentially saying like I I feel like it's been a bit of a tumultuous last week there's been a few changes that have come into my world Mm. and um, you know there's a few difficult conversations that I need to be having and it makes me feel uncomfortable and you know it's that fear but I know also on the other side of that is is you know being vulnerable courageous it's yeah, coming from that place of love, it's so important for us to do that and step into it. So mm. I think for me personally, this is a really amazing card to yeah to have for this week. Yeah, I need it. I yeah. need courage. Mm. So I hope it resonates with all of you out there too. Me too. Yeah, mm. that really resonates with me. Mm. I feel like my life has been held hostage by fear, and like even even getting pregnant with Freddie, that was. Mm. Starting that process. Absolutely. Fear, hope, fear, hope, you know, fear, love, fear, like, you know, on and off, on Ooh, and off, on and off. Nine yeah. months of fear, I would maybe have well, thought. Yeah, but also a lot of hope to say, yeah. okay, he's here now. He's here. Yes. Like I had to spend a lot of time in the moment going, I, he is alive right now. Yeah. He is here. He, like, you know, it was a staying mm. in the moment and the moment was moment. hope. Yeah. That moment was love. Mm-hmm. If I look too much into the future, then the fear came in. Mm. Then the fear wow. came in. So it was yeah. staying in the moment mm. and holding that moment of hope. But this is, yeah, this is, mm. this is beautiful in, in that way of that that courage piece. Mm. It really is. I love that. And the tingles. It's come back to me. Someone mm. said that if you get the shivers, mm. or if you get goosebumps all over, it is your higher self. Mm, that's right. Like sort of saying, Speaking "Yep, you got you. this girl," and this is this is what like this is the right. The right, right way path. forward. Yeah. Mm, I yeah. Love that. It's not a, no, I don't feel fearful about that. I feel, I feel protected mm. and guided. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I love that. Me too. So, on our show last week, we did part one of human design. Mm-hmm. And what is human design, you may ask? Well, it's a logical system that brings together the principles of the I Ching, astrology, Kabbalah, uh, Hindu, Brahm, chakra system, quantum physics. It also looks at the Enneagram and Maya Briggs from a personality test kind of way. And your human design chart, also called a body graph, is calculated using your date of birth, time and place to reveal your genetic design. So it's your, in short, energetic blueprint. That is right. So we looked at the type last week, and yeah, Chloe, just jump no, in any time. Beautiful. Just, My gosh, I'm, I feel up. like you've like, smashed it. 
what was, you know, you're my teacher, mm. um, went through the type, which is, mm-hmm. you know, what you are at, you know, we're all different types. We've got, yep. the, We've got the five. The five. Types. We've got the manifester, the manifesting generator, mm-hmm. the generator, the projector and the reflector. Mm-hmm. And then every type has a strategy, yes. which we also explored. Mm-hmm. So the strategy speaks to how we best create opportunity. Now, today we're going to go into three other areas. We're yes. going to talk about authority, which is around decision making. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about profile, which is linked to our purpose. Yes. And then lastly, we're going to talk about the not self theme which is your signature and or signature. signpost. Oh, yep. okay. Mm-hmm. Um, around are we actually aligned? So what Amazing. are the signs Brilliant. around alignment or, or disalignment? Can't wait to dive in. Yes. Yeah, so Ooh. let's get stuck into authority. So our authority is like our um, like internal compass, I guess, kind of like – how we should make decisions or how we can make decisions that are more aligned to us. So each, um, there's seven different types of authorities in human design and you can have a different authority depending on, well, this kind of comes back to your own blueprint. So if you had, um, you you can have different authorities as different types. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So So your so your strategy is is directly linked to your type, mm. but your authority can be it's it's just whatever your authority is, depending on your energetic blueprint. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um yeah, so it's not connected to the type. Some actually some of them I, I some of them can have different ones, but you're not always as a as a manifester, I'm a an emotional manifester, but there'll be other manifestors that not are not an emotional manis- manifester. They could be a different a different authority to gotcha. me. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So um, the seven possible authorities are sacral, which is trust your gut, emotional, which is wait for clarity, tune into your intuition, which is splenic, mm. self projected or talk it out, ego, which is tuning into your willpower be in the right space and talk it out, so mental or environmental. And then there's um, reflectors. This is for you. Yours is wait for a lunar cycle. So reflectors are really connected to the moon cycle. Hmm. So very cool. I'm going to run through now each of those. I can't remember what yours is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I need okay. to probably look that up. Um, so you're an emotional. <clears throat> I'm an emotional. Yeah. So you're only one. You're only one. Yep. Do you want me to keep talking as I'm doing this? Or oh no 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 no! Out? We're going to cut this out. Um. Okay, my people. I was just making some notes as you were talking. Where do you look at you go? <laughs> don't don't peek. You're so good. <laughs> Okay. The well, thing is, I'm not a very good listener. I always thought I was a good listener. Oh, shit. I don't... Oh, no, I do. I'm a bad listener. Steph. Oh, you're sacral. Okay. Oh, which makes sense as a... Splenic. All right. Okay. So, yeah, there's, so there's seven types of authorities. Mm-hmm. And so the... The first one that I'm going to, so this is really about the decision-making process, your inner compass guiding you to make decisions. Um, And it's more like tapping into your, your body's inner knowing and wisdom and knowledge. Okay. Yeah. So together with your strategy, it's how you can move most effortlessly and easefully through life in a really aligned way um, for each individual. So you might notice like less resistance if you follow your authority. Um, So there's seven types, as I said. So the first one is emotional authority. So this is um, with your solar plexus. So when you've got your chart, your solar plexus is coloured in or defined. And this is the centre of emotions, feelings and sensitivity. And when you, if you, um, if your authority is emotional, then you're designed to experience a full spectrum spectrum of emotions. So you, they kind of call it in human design, riding the emotional wave. Mm-hmm. You can dive deeper if you have an emotional authority. There's different types of emotional waves that you might experience as well, and they're like you can we can work those out depending on everyone's chart, and they're like 
parts that are further coloured in the lines between the kind of centres. So it's really kind of quite interesting when you can dive in really deep and kind of work out what type of emotion, emotional wave you're going to experience. So for instance, I'm the manifester and have emotional authority. And my kind of when I experience an emotional wave, for me, it's really like um, sharp and then it like spikes kind of and then comes down kind of like a mountain, you know, mm-hmm. like peaks and then troughs. But others might be like kind of more of like a, a arc yeah, kind okay. of response. So but mine's quite sharp yeah. when I sense it. Sharp and pff, Yeah, pretty full on. Yeah, yeah, like I can feel many different emotions quickly. Yep. But then I come down yep. off of them quickly too. Probably, I don't know, if it, is it good, is it bad? But the main thing... It is. It, it is. is, it is. But yeah, we're here to experience all emotions and when it comes to making a decision, it's really important for us to give ourselves time. So waiting is key and when we give ourselves time, we will then come to the decision with clarity. But we can't, we, we shouldn't make a swift decision or a spontaneous decision um, like in the moment. We need to kind of sleep on it. It's really important mm. for us. Um, you want me to do that? You think this nice pick might be some good content, don't you? <laughs> oh, my God, really quickly. I was, I was looking for your video and I was like, where is it? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you're not meant to make decisions on a high or on a low. You want to kind of wait for that clarity. Um, and, one, and, and I know yeah. when we were chatting about doing the podcast, mm. you mm. said like, I need, you know, I'll get back to you in a few days because, so was that informed mm-hmm. from this? Absolutely. Yeah. So I decided... Well, I try now. I I notice in my body when I get like a, you know, when you asked me, I got a real sense like my intuition and body response kind of was like, yes, you know, like really good. And often that will continue, but it's best for, we need to see if it's still there, Mm -hmm. the same. So then you wait, sleep on it wait for a bit of time, 24 to 48 hours. And if that yes or that body response is still there, then you know that that's the right decision to make. But if it's waned and you're like, oh, no, like Mm. that's not really for me, then that would be like a no. Next. Yeah, next, move on. Yeah. So that's for the emotional. So the next um, type of authority is sacral. So which was you? Mm. You have sacral okay. authority. So you... Thank you. <laughs> you're like, what does that mean, Chloe? <laughs> you have consistent access to a life force energy. So your energy um, centre is activated or defined, and that's your hub for pleasure, creativity, reproduction, sustainability, and sexuality. And um, basically having your sacral defined is that you're here to... Dis- you're designed to respond to life. Mm-hmm. Um, So when you feel like when you're going to make a decision, you will get full body response. Do you feel like you get that? Yeah. Tell me, tell me more more. and then I'll respond. So it's quite a primal response. Yeah. So you'll like feel in your body. Oh yeah, and we're just doing it. Yeah. You'll be like, right, like, yep, this is it. Yeah. And you'll know. And end of conversation. Yeah. There doesn't need to be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You shouldn't rationalize it. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let your mind kind of talk because mm. if your mind comes in, you're not actually in your body and you haven't, yeah. So it's about being in your body, feeling yes. that response and then going with that. That's your yes. If you don't feel it in your body, then. I won't do it. Meh. Nah. So a really good thing for um, sacrals is to ask closed questions. So this is a good one for Huey to know because um, with a sacral, not, like open-based questions are a little bit tricky because you've got to think too much. But if it's a closed question, <laughs> like, so for instance, what did I put down here? Um, you could ask yourself or like your husband or whatever could, or spouse could be like, do you want curry for dinner? And then wait. No. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but <laughs> perfect though. But 
<laughs> or you can ask yourself these kinds of questions to kind yeah. of like turn on your sacral a bit I more. I like that. Yeah, so asking those closed questions, more like a yes or no response. And then really feeling in your body, like if it's a yes, how does that feel for you in your mm. body? Where do you feel that sensation? And then how does it feel in your body when it's a no? So it could feel different as it a does. sacral response yeah. for different people. But, yeah, knowing your own internal compass and your response for a yes versus a no is really important for, for sacrals. Very interesting. How does that feel for you? That feels, it feels like I know that that's correct. Like mm. it feels, it feels mm. yeah, it feels like, yep. And this is what I love about human design is often someone will say it and you'll be like, yeah, that's me. And even the Indian, you know? I was like, my body doesn't want that. Like, No, you were straight up. No, no, girl. I love, I love Indian food. Love oh, you didn't even say an Indian curry, but that's where I went. You just said curry. Well, you, yeah, it could be Indian. But I love, I love curry, curry, but just. You don't want that tonight. Don't want that right now. Like, no, thanks, Huey. Don't get me that. Yeah, I feel like, um, <laughs> this is off topic, but we'll talk about this mm. later. I feel like I, my body's quite inflamed right now. Mm. I've still got that rosacea, all that mm. kind of stuff. Did so you try like that cream? I, I have tried the cream, but I don't think it's topical. Yeah, I think yeah, it's, yeah. it's my body, Internal. right? Yeah, so yeah. So I've been, the last few days I've been doing um, a bit of a like low inflammation, just in terms of being very aware of what I'm, oh, I've yeah. just drunk a can of Coke, which is probably against it, all the things. <laughs> it's just sugar. But just being very aware of sort of what, yeah, sugar is no good. Mm. Um, but just, yeah, low inflammation foods, just to try and see if I can come down. So curry is spicy mm. generally and it's just, that's why so I that said would no so quickly. That would aggravate, aggravate me. Yeah. Mm. But we'll see. I'm just giving it a go. So like more, um, you know. What's that word? Neutrally kind. It's not necessarily, but cooling Neutral. foods. Neutral. So in like Ayurveda, Ayurveda yeah, kids, Ayurveda. Yeah. Um, Ayurveda, <laughs> if you say it, it's a, the cooling foods, not so much the heaty. Not the warmth. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm, can't wait to hear about that. Yes. Okay, so the next type is splenic or tune into your intuition. Authority. I was going to say, is that to do with the spleen? Mm. Mm. It is to do with the spleen. Oh. Yeah. So um, this is like our oldest awareness centre. So it's all about survival, instinct, intuition and fear. So when you have, you, it's about trusting, trusting that innate knowing within yourself and that intuition that really like, it's a quiet voice. And this is really important for those with the splenic authority to, you've got to quieten the mind. Otherwise you'll miss the little cues of that tiny little voice giving you that like little like whispers. Yeah. That guiding, you know, keeping you I safe. Imagine like a little imaginary friend sitting on your shoulder. Yeah. Being like, Listen. <laughs> Can you hear me, Chloe? That's right. So you really got to take notice of your mind. If there's lots of chatter going on, you got to stop the chatter and um, and come back to the present moment. So one thing for splenics is to you need to be open to adapting and changing um, because the spleen is about the present moment. So being in the present moment is really important for you. And one thing, I don't say, I say you need to take, the, the one thing about human design is just take what resonates with you. Mm. Some of these things will not resonate for you yeah. and it won't feel right and that's totally fine. So just take, if, if it feels good, go with it. If not, let it go. That's um, a um, that's a good a good tip in life, I think. Hmm, I think so too. Mm. Mm. So another um, type of authority is um, ego or tune into your willpower. So this is where you'd be you'll be guided by your heart, and so this is where and your will will help you make decisions. So the right decisions for you will come um, when your heart is pulling you towards something. So, and you'll feel motivated by something when you feel it in your heart. Mm. Um, it's all about desires. So often those with, um, with ego probably may, you know, we've been conditioned over time um, to rationalise and justify our decisions and, um, you know, it may be different desires that we've had and we've had to rationalise. And so therefore we might have a guilt around following that desire. But for, if you've got an ego, it's really important um, to follow that that desire or that will or that heart pulling you in that direction because that is your, mm. that's your internal compass of how you should best make decisions is mm. following your heart. The next type is 
self-projected. One of my little boys is this one, so I find it interesting, but it's about talking it out. So you find clarity um, by talking decisions out with people that you trust. So it's important to find those people in your life who you can talk it out with because it's not actually asking for that person to give you an answer to that decision. It's more you being able to listen to your own voice as you are speaking and then that in turn will give you clarity and be able to come to that decision um, on your own. Mm. So it's like those people are like sounding boards. So um, they will listen and ask questions rather than offering advice or their opinions. So that's why it's really important to find those right people that you can talk to because, as I said, it's not about getting the answers from them. Yep. Um, when you have this authority, you have a really strong sense of identity and it's really essential to feel the decision. The decision will move you in the right direction. So you've got to, like, feel it as well. Um after talking it out. Mm. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Have I talked about, what what am I up to next? (laughs) There's two more. So there's, um, the next one is be in the right space Mm -hmm. and talk it out. So there's like a mental or environmental authority. And these are process-based decision makers. I actually haven't come across one of these yet, but I hope to. One of you out there. Um, so send you're us, meant to send go. Us your, send us your profile. Send us. Go on, <laughs> let me read you. Um, you are meant to go through a process of talking things out in the right spaces before deciding what is right for you. So when you're making a decision, it's best to talk it out in the spaces that feel really good with the people who feel really good for you. Um, and and then you'll get that that kind of truth will emerge over time once you feel in that space and with that person. So right, that decision. right place, right face. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> I love your mind. <laughs> yeah, right place, right face. There also you right go. Right space, right face, whatever works. Right place. Oh yes, yeah, space. Oh, I love these rhyming words. So good. And the lucky last is a wait for the lunar cycle. And this is specific to reflectors. So it's also process-based decision makers. So they're meant to um, go through the process of talking things out in the Mm -hmm. right space before deciding whether something is right for them. But for really big decisions, it's kind of recommended that you wait a full lunar cycle before making a decision, which is quite a long time. It is. So if you were in the new moon phase when that came about, you'd wait for the next Next new moon. moon. Yeah, Yeah, to really feel into it. And, yeah, taking your time on decisions when they're big life decisions. So it might be like big life decision like, you know, a new career change or a new relationship. So those bigger decisions, like if you can, wait a full lunar cycle before jumping into something. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So as you were um, going through them, a few sort of jumped out and resonated more with me than others, even though I am a, a mm. sacral. So when, in your chart, when you look at it, can you sort of be mainly have, you know, sacral authority but also have a bit of splenic or this or that, or is it more well, you're one and... Typically for the authority, you're one. That doesn't mean, though, like you have... So everyone has these energy centres in their body. Like, so you've got... Everyone's got a heart. Everyone's got the ego. Um, everyone's got the spleen, right? Mm-hmm. So in your body chart. But what it might mean when you feel a pull to different areas is it may be that that part in your chart is coloured in and defined. Okay, gotcha. So um, therefore you have a strong sense in that area. But then that kind of, yeah. 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 So that could be, yeah. For instance, do you have one that was strong for you? Um, I think the talking it out. Mm. I think I quite like to talk it out. Um, and, yeah, that would have been the main one. Mm. And sometimes that emotional, the emotional piece too. But I think, yeah. the, I think the sacral, yeah, sacral was the one that was most most me. Most you, which yeah. Which was me. Yeah, yeah. But I would, yeah, it was then the defined centres that you may have in your chart that are coloured in that you feel a lot of energy yeah. from as well. 
Okay. So now we're going to dive into our profile, mm-hmm. which is how we best align with our purpose. And it sort of, well, it does support us in how to choose a path um, and discover our soul's purpose. Mm-hmm. So important. So important. It's quite amazing that something can support you in in finding that. I don't yeah. know. I feel like a lot of us are like, well, for me, if I'm talking about myself, I'm like, what is my purpose? Yeah. What am I here to do? Yeah. What, who am I here to serve? I've never really thought about that until recently. Yeah. So in, it's it's deep. It was more like, I remember mum and dad used to always say to us, like, do what makes you happy and do what you're yes. passionate about and everything else will come. I know. And but how many people are living in alignment with their purpose, passion, Mm. what truly fulfills them? I think not many. No. I think you then, you know, you might start thinking that and you go, what, you know what, we're in the rat race, we've got to make money, we've got That's to do right. this. Yeah, but what You actually... sort of get caught up and you don't have that pause. Mm. And I think maybe COVID was a big pause for people. Yes. To go, what is, what is this? Or, or you might yeah. have a major life event, which was what yes. my piece is going, well, what the fuck am I here to do? Absolutely. What am I here to share? Yeah. So the, the profile doesn't really articulate exactly like, oh, that you need to be a lawyer or a project manager or Which anything is what like I was that. trying to make you tell me last episode. Wasn't I it? think you I were. Like, I was like, what? I don't know. Everyone's here to do their own thing. Can I ask the question in a different way? I'm like, but tell me. <laughs> I can't tell you what everyone's meant to be, but I guess it kind of gives you an idea on how you, um, how you can best align with your unique, your unique purpose and how you can use your individual gifts in a way to show up in the world. So I think if we're all doing this, how amazing would the world be if we were all living our purpose and sharing our gifts? Mm. We're not actually going to go into gifts. That's kind of like another layer. (laughs) There's so many layers um, in human design. But um, if you get a a human design chart done, then you can actually dive into your unique gifts, which are in your body graph. They're like the little lines that link the different centres together. Mm. So sometimes there can be half lines or there can be full lines. So they're gates and channels. Yeah, okay. Would you ever share your body graph? Yeah. Like could we post our body graphs? Yeah, for sure. Or maybe we just set the Facebook group. Oh, we could do the Facebook group, yeah. Or yeah. Is, it, is it like am I giving people? Nah, you're not giving, <laughs> not giving, you're not giving too much, much away. Okay. Nah. Because no one knows know. how to read them anyway. Well, they're pretty in-depth. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't know if anyone would like would spend time on someone else's <laughs> unless you're a reader. I don't know. Yeah. It excites me, though, to look at others because I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh you know? That channel's open. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. Okay. It's really fun. So, yeah, the profile provides us with potent information on how we can best learn and share our work with the world as well as the needs we may find in our needs we have in relationships or life or career in general. So in addition to the type strategy, strategy and authority, profile can be one of the most essential and actionable pieces of our design. So what I'm going to do, there's there's six different numbers, mm-hmm. okay? So when you get your, um, once you do your design, you'll be given two numbers, mm-hmm. okay? So the first one is how you view yourself and then the second number is how others view you. So you always get two numbers and there can be different um, you know, so you can have a one, three, or you can have a three, five, or you can have a four, six, you know, so there's many different kind of um, ways that can be read. Everyone's kind of unique. So what I'm actually going to do is, um, well, Steph, you're a one, three, mm-hmm. uh, I'm a three, five, but I'm just going to go through the numbers. So one to six and kind of just talk generally about those numbers and what it can mean for you. Okay, so the okay. first number on your chart is a number that you see yourself as. Yes. And five is what? Sorry, the second number is? How others can how perceive others. you. Yep, cool. Yeah. But then you, once you know them, you can kind of step into that and be like and harness yep, okay. those as well. So and that, if you have a number one in your profile, which you do, Steph, this is your first number, you are here to investigate. You mm-hmm. have a really investigative nature in you mm-hmm. and you can't help but want to learn about things, okay? So you really want to dive deep and feel that urgency to kind of dive deep into many different facets. Does this resonate with Completely. you? Completely. 
but you want to like, you're not just like a, I think I'm a bit more of an overview kind of like I'll dive into things but maybe not go really deep. If you have a one, you want to know the ins and outs Mm -hmm. of anything that you dive into that like lights you up, right? Yeah. And I can see this in you, you fucking like with the whole podcast thing, she's like, she dived real deep. You found it all out and then you shared it with me, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love that. And I, yeah. in ways that are not You're productive. You're really good about it. But in that. ways that are not productive, I dive very deep. So for example, mm. and I'm not proud to admit this, but I feel like it's my duty to be honest and vulnerable. Yes. On our podcast. Yes. So one of my favourite shows is Below Deck. Oh, yes. Uh, which is a, a TV show about a crew who live on a, no, they don't live, but they're, they're on a luxury like mega yacht. Yes. And it's the, the crew that sort of serve the guests. Yeah. So I watch an episode of Below Deck mm. on my TV. Mm. I then go online to the forums on Reddit. There's a Below Deck Reddit forum. So it's like just a, I talk about the episode with my friends, <laughs> with my Your anonymous friends. friends. I don't even know who they are. Um, we just say funny comments. Then I've also got a podcast. <laughs> you have a podcast that I listen to. I don't another podcast. No, it's not my podcast. A podcast oh, I listen about to about top, Below Deck. Below Deck, not Top Deck. And this is not, but this is not just Below Deck. Like I do this for most shows I watch. Yeah, you really do. Not always a podcast, but I'll definitely like I'll just be you know watching Doctor Who and I'll be like, oh, I want to think about this more. I want to mm. explore this concept more. So I'll find the Whovians. Mm. Whether that is, you know, wherever they are, whether it's Instagram. Oh, yeah, with Below Deck, I go hardcore on Instagram. Okay. Because there's all these, oh, Bravo. There's all these different Bravo. um, You don't even speaking. I I didn't even know what Reddit was over the weekend. You just like (laughs) looked at me in disgust. It was disgust. Complete disgust. So, yeah, I definitely (laughs) deep dive. Mm, Deep dive. You're a deep diver. I'm a deep diver. So, you are here to become an expert in different areas and fields and have a really solid foundation understanding of different areas. Okay. Okay. So, So I need to channel that probably in more productive ways. Maybe. Well, I don't know. No. Well, it's a productive way for me to relax. Yeah, that's right. You've followed that kind of urge. Yeah. So, no, go with it. That's That's great. That actually makes me feel really good, Chloe, knowing that this is just not a. like weird obsession yeah. I have. I know, this is the whole thing. You feel seen. I can get a bit obsessive. Yeah, yeah. that's quite, totally okay. You're meant to. You're mm. meant to be an investigator. Okay. Well, okay? I'm living, I'm definitely living that one. Well, you're living, yeah, you're in alignment for that. And not many other people would necessarily see that from me. No. Yeah, because it's, no. it's me. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, Awesome. So if you've got a number two in your profile, then you um, are a natural genius. Oh. How lucky are you? <laughs> So um, you basically want to find um, like a career that is one that feels most natural or comes really easily to you. So you just kind of have this inner knack, inner knowing for things. So if you really settle into that, like what comes naturally to you? So you have a gift of easily articulating this thing that comes naturally to you. And if you lean, yeah, just lean into it, lean into those things that um, just feel so easy and like so innately normal for you. Mm. So if you have a number two, yeah, it's what's easy, what feels really congruent with yourself, what just makes you, yeah, what makes you feel alive, but you don't really have to think about. Mm. Yeah. So the way to though find this like natural tap into this natural innate like genius within you is that you need time and space to allow you to be in your own self and find that flow and then you can discover those things for yourself. So <laughs> you thought that was good, didn't you? Yeah. So number two, natural genius. Find the things that are easy, easy and effortful for you. If you've got a number. Effortful or effortless? Effortless, sorry. Effortless, Effortless. thank you. (laughs) Not effortful. Has to be. We're clearly neither of us are twos. We are not twos, no. But we're going into you now. You're a three. I'm a three. So my first number is a three. Your second number is a three. Mm. Mm. So for number threes, if you've got a number three in your profile, um, you've got a natural entrepreneurial spirit. Okay. So you like to experiment. You've got a really experimental, um, experimental <laughs> nature and you're here to learn. Mm-hmm. Dive in, learn. Um, there's no such thing as failure. So because you're always here to learn a lesson mm-hmm. from that. Mm. Um, so any mistakes, um, step into that, drop into that and it'll enable you to fuel that growth 
if you are open to learning from that mistake yeah. or if you want to say it's a failure. They give you those mistakes, give you so much wisdom that then you can go on and share your learnings with others. So pretty cool. And you resonate with that? So much so. Mm. I don't feel like fearful around stepping into new things. It's never, if I really sit with that, I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'll start a business. I'll, I'll try this podcast. Like it doesn't take me much to just give something a go. Give it a go. Yeah. yeah. And I don't really see it as, yeah, as a failure. Like it's just about giving something a go and trying something new and going with it. Do you feel it? Yeah, I do. Mm. I do. Because yeah, I don't really think, I don't see anything as a failure. I see something as mm. we gave it a go and yeah, you can didn't go the way that. we wanted to and we learned from it. Yeah. 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 And you can pivot, course correct from that. Or and we then try, try, on. try again. And yeah. Just, you know, just, keep just trying. critically look at what we did and then. Um, yeah. Gather that wisdom yeah. Yeah. from yeah. that learning. And yeah. yeah give and keep it moving try. forward. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, for me, very, yeah, innately feel that. If you've got a four in your profile, it's all about sharing all that you know with your community. So mm. this is the core kind of piece for this number four. It's um, it's really about informing your community, collaborating with others. Like you bring so much warmth and um you're genuine, you're friendly. So you have the, this innate ability to create and cultivate connection. So it's really stepping into that. So your most important opportunities will come through people that you know. So it's really about that community. So it might be something like an opportunity might come from a previous um, your colleague or a friend of yours. So really like that connection and community is really important for you if you've got a number four in your profile. I feel like Hugh could be a four too. I want to, I really want to, mm. I think he's like that community and he's also that genius. Yeah. Cool. I really want to get his ready. Yes, yet. let's Those do it. Let's I do want, it. We want fours get in our life. Me four. Yeah. Love it. Bring people together. If you have a five in your profile, then you're a really good natural problem solver. So Which I've is got, you. yeah, I've got this as my second. Mm. Yeah. So, um, we're quite good at offering practical solutions and we might come up with a solution that no one has thought of. So it might just be something that like just kind of drops in like, oh, why don't we try this, mm. you know? Um, but it's really important to kind of recognise that as a five, people can easily project things onto you. So you want to really, like if you're thinking about a career, people can say to you like, oh, you're really good at this or whatever um, because they can often see and I find this sometimes, people can often see my strengths that I haven't not yet seen, mm. which is great to, to know and be told. But the real, um, if you're looking at this from a career perspective, you've got to make sure that you, it, feel, it feels aligned for you because mm -hmm. others can project things onto you, but it has to feel aligned yeah, for yourself yeah. in order to move forward. So, and, you know, use your strengths in a way that it's aligned for you. Yeah. So, yeah, number five, so the problem solvers. And finally, if you have six in your profile, then you um, you like naturally inspire a trust in others. You're very wise. You're like the sage um, mm. and you have a really insightful perspective that can transform any space that you are in or you're going to be wow. in. So really quite powerful, number six. Um, and this is quite interesting. So you're going to have stages in your life where you will evolve. Where you will evolve. Mm -hmm. So um, in the first 30 years is about like experimenting and gather, like trying new things and gathering that wisdom and experience. And between the years of 30 to 50, you're finding like you're grounding into your essence and you're finding totally. stability. Yep. And you're seeing, you're seeing a more fuller perspective, right? But then from 50 is when you really like kind of step into your power and you're really an, an embodied kind of version of yourself and you're here to share your wisdom that you've cultivated over mm, the past, mm -hmm. yeah, past 50 years. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So amazing. Have we got a dog barking? Yeah, that's my dog. <laughs> Postman's probably here. This is so, so I ordered bizarre. one of those, you know, in this economy, we always have to think about things we can do to be more efficient. Yes. I've ordered one of those um, dip nail. Oh my God, you things. sent that to me. I yeah, can't wait until I am something. Yes. That's probably the postie. Oh my gosh, um, can't, can't wait. Can't wait. Who is dropping it's, that off? So I can share about that next week. I can't wait. Well, probably I won't actually because I just got my nails done for my birthday. So yeah. I'll share about it in a few when weeks. You, yeah, when you do them next. <laughs> 
Perfect. So that was a lot of information. But what I would just say is find out your profile and then you can kind of filter back and circle back and just kind of look, yeah, at what your two numbers are and then have another listen and see if it resonates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. Wow. So that we've we've touched on authority and profile. The next one is not self theme. So that really threw me that mm. title. Mm. And signature. And so signature. Two things. Yeah. What does it mean? Okay. Let me tell you. So these are pretty much your signposts to kind of reveal when you're on track and aligned as well as when you're not in alignment and a course correction is needed. Mm -hmm. So let me explain a bit more. So your signature. So each of your um each of your each type has the same signature and not self. Okay? okay. So it's a feeling that you're gonna get when you are aligned, you'll get that's your signature. Yes. And then when you're not aligned, that's your not self theme. Okay. So as a manifester, for instance, which I am, so when I'm out of alignment and not living in a true essence of like living by my type, my strategy, authority, mm -hmm. I will feel anger. Okay. And to me, this like resonates. I have always wondered until I like found human design, I was like, I, I feel angry a lot. Yeah. Like I have a, like a big kind of, which people wouldn't really think from me because mm -hmm. I'm quite like grounded with dark, usually. I'm with your dark hair now. Mm. <laughs> you're so good. I'm an attack. <laughs> Um, I hope I'm not. I prefer to no, be no, 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 in alignment no, no, no. with my signature, which is no, no, no. peace. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it, it's just a really nice, I've just, it resonated with me and I was like, oh, that makes sense. Again, yes. I feel seen. It's normal for me to feel angry. It's okay for me to feel angry. Yeah. I don't need to feel worried about anger that. Anger is not actually, we all see anger as a very bad emotion. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's an emotion. Not. It's an emotion. It's, it moves. Yeah. All emotions move through us. All emotions move, yeah. They're not here to stay forever. Yes. And we are not our emotion. Mm, good one. So good. That's right. So I'm not here to be angry all the yeah. time, which I know. But it is a sign. Mm. It's that signpost. If I'm feeling angry, okay, what in my world right now is not allowing me to be in alignment? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Like say I'm getting pissed off that the kids aren't going to sleep. Okay, well, how... Could have I allowed this to work in a more harmonious way? Mm. Why am I feeling angry right now? Is it because I'm not getting that time for myself? I can't go yes. and have my bath because my kids aren't sleeping? Yes, probably. Yeah. Yep. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's just those little like, oh, okay. It's just that little reminder. Mm -hmm. What can I change right now yep. to like kind of bring me back to my signature? Which is a nice way to think about it as well because yeah. you just it stops you. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. so instead of leaning into that anger and maybe going off and off, like, you know. Continuing to let it, like, build and build and build. Yeah. Yeah, it makes you stop. It's almost like a circuit breaker. It is, yeah. Course correction. How can I get back to my signature of mm, peace? Of peace. Yeah. Yep. So for a manifester, it's peace, feeling peaceful. I like it. And you'll feel more peaceful as a manis manifester if you're informing others, mm -hmm. you know, and you're following those urges, but you're informing others so that you can live in flow. Yes. For um, So generators and manifesting generators, as we've kind of spoken about before, you have like similarities. Mm -hmm. So as a generator, yours is frustration and satisfaction. So you will feel frustrated if you're in your not self theme. Mm -hmm. And then when you are feeling in alignment, you'll feel quite satisfied Beautiful. with how everything's going. Now, just as another a manifesting generator, though, too, can feel similar to the manifester. So you can also feel anger and peace as well. I feel like that's mine. Yeah. Yeah. And you might like, yeah, remember this is all take what resonates, leave the rest. Mm -hmm. So just be aware as a man, Jen, you may have frustration, anger as your not self, satisfaction and peace. Mind you, I almost, maybe it's the frust. Yeah, I'm going to have to think mm, about that. That's really yeah. interesting. And yeah. it's okay for it to be yeah. a bit of a mixture. Yeah. What about the projectors? Yes. So projectors, um, if you're feeling out of alignment and in not self, um, you'll feel really bitter. Mm. Yeah. I've spoken to projectors about this and it's like really like just kind of like, yes, I do. I feel like that bitterness and it's like, ew, like, mm. yeah, ooh. yeah. Ooh. That's how um, I felt after that uh, shot we did on the weekend. Oh, that was too bitter. Tequila. Ugh. I don't know why we did that. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, this is, sorry, just a little 
Smart segue. I really smell, I smelt tequila in the car when I was driving here. Do yeah. You, do you get that sometimes? I did. I got it last night. Weird. I was what just is like, that? Whoa, I can, I can. Like a really big waft of it. Yeah. I, I tasted it. Yeah, me too. Mm. So strange. Mm. I don't know what that's about. Taking me back to the night. Mm. I obviously wanted to, my higher self wanted to go back to the night. <laughs> um, so pro- what's the flip side of bitterness? Sorry, yeah. So you'll feel bitter as a projector um, if you are in alignment and your signature is success. Mm. That's a fun one. How fun. It's a nice one. Yeah, I love yeah. that. And then as a reflector, if you're in your not self, you'll feel disappointed. But if you're in your signature, um, your signpost is surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Because there, remember, reflectors are, you know, me here to kind of feel, yeah, be open. Hours. Yeah, the wise hours. Yes. So feel, be surprised by wow. things. I love it. Amazing. Hmm. Well, thank you so much for taking us through all of that, Chloe. I feel like I need to now go back to my human design. Yes. We'll post a link for it in these show notes as you well will. if people want to do it. And we'd love yeah. to continue that conversation mm. with everyone. Yes, I would love to, yeah, hear and from others. And tell me, like, so how does this have to do with, so our podcast is all about trying alternative healing methods. Mm. It's about, you know, healing and soothing ourselves and mm-hmm. all of that piece. Mm-hmm. How does this then fit into that? Well, for me, if I'm thinking about how it's supported me on a journey, mm. I think for me it's about a journey of self-discovery, mm. which I think too is about healing. Yeah. You know, oh, totally. I feel like it fits in together. So I feel like it just... To know oneself. You yes. Know. Yeah. Enables you to step more fully into your authentic self, you know. So I feel like if I can understand myself on a deeper level, be it from astrology or from human design or just, yeah, kind of understanding myself, then it's going to allow me to be my best version of self, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which in essence, if I'm living in true alignment with myself, I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to be a happier person. I'm going to be more peaceful. Yes. Um, And yeah, hopefully I can, it allows me to look at my gifts too and and work with my purpose and kind of know like, you know, why am I here? Mm -hmm. You know, what am I here to share? Mm. And I mean, one question I always had is when you have something, you know, a, a really big life event happen, mm. which changes everything. Mm-hmm. So I would feel like I'm a very different person to who I was mm-hmm. pre-Arthur being born. Mm-hmm. Would, like, I, I know this doesn't change because this is written in the stars, mm. but would I connect to things differently? Because I have done a few, you know, people have said, oh, what, what's your personality? Like, what were you mm. in the Maya Briggs and mm. this and that? And I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm that person anymore. Mm-hmm. But I suppose that there are, I, I am that person, but maybe things show up in different ways or maybe I mm. show up in different ways. I think so. I think we all mature, don't we? I mean, we, we all evolve on our life's journey from different experiences yeah. and, and things that come into our life or people or uh, events. So I guess, I guess this, if we go back to like, this is our energetic blueprint it will evolve with us too, you know, like, mm. but it just, it, our gifts don't change, but yeah. we may step into them more. Yeah. Or differently. Yeah. Or differently. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like that's how it, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And any, mm. anything else you want to mention about human design? I, I just recommend everyone just to have a little dip their feet in and mm. see. See if it resonates. If not, you know, as we said, leave it. But it's... Yeah. What I like about it is I feel like it, it, it feels very holistic. Mm. Yeah, um, it is. It feels like it just covers so many different so things many and joins a lot of dots together that yeah. may be a single, a single um, test or, or profile mm. might not do. We think about all the different kind of areas that it like pulls from. Yeah. It's quite robust in that way. Well, thank you so much, Chloe. That was just, yeah, beautiful exploration. And I can't Mm. wait to just look at that graph chart. Me too. I'm still on my learning journey with it. I probably will. It's so deep and elaborate. So Mm. um, I've still got many things to learn from it, but it's exciting. Yeah. And in terms of how much it costs, well, it doesn't cost anything. Mm. So you can just log on to the link. You can can get readers to do a design for you. So I've had... um, I've had a couple done for my boys mm. where it's just like a PDF and you get about 30 pages kind of given to you. And that was maybe about 
I think it was about 70 to 100 potentially, but really in depth. And then I've also had some readings done um, more like kind of biz- in a business sense. Okay. So looking at my chart for career and that was done like in a videoed kind of mm-hmm. way. Um, and then also I've had another one done, which was a mix of human design and astrology. And that was um, like an online Zoom reading. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So there's many different options and kind of, yeah, range from like 70 through to 150, I'd yep. say. But if you're interested and you don't have that extra spare cash at the moment, then you yeah. can just go online, you can, yep. start there's to have so a look at that, just text your friends and say, hey, what's your, what time are you born? Yeah. And then you can start pop their charts in too. Yeah. yeah. And what we might do is I'll maybe link some of the some people that I follow on Instagram and things that are really like insightful. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that would so, be awesome. Yeah, enjoy. Well, enjoy. a lot to think about. I'm going to go jump on Reddit after this and just Ooh. a deep dive further into human design. I can't wait to hear what Reddit has to say. <laughs> Reddit's got a lot of things to say. Amazing. Um, we have to check out Thread. Oh, yeah, yeah. Threads. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Threads, don't even know. Yeah. Have you been yeah. on? I've had a look. I've had a little look. There's been chatter in my business coaching group mm. about it. Yeah. Mm. Still early stages, been around for five days. So it's yeah, like but they reached one million users, mm-hmm. I think, in a day. So and it was Shit. it was just before. So Chat GPT broke all those records. Yeah, and then Threads broke them again. Wow, which just shows you how how quickly things are picking up pace. That is insane. Yeah, yeah I hadn't heard that. Yeah, wow. Yeah, wow. wow, wow, wow. Okay, well we can report back on that too. Yeah. Well, on that note, yeah. All right. Signing off. Can't wait to see you all or chat to you all. Next week. Yeah. <laughs> might see you, might chat to or you. Or you. I'll, I'll chat to you. you. I'll see you, I'll chat to you. <laughs> and uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Ciao. Thank you all so much for listening. We really do appreciate your support. Please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Give us a rating and a review. And if you like this show, please share it with a friend and tell them to have a listen. Just send them the link to that Spotify or Apple or wherever you get your podcast. You can also connect with us on Instagram at the.selfishpodcast. You can always slide into our DMs as well and let us know if you have got a different type of treatment that you'd like us to explore or if you've got any specific questions. Anyway, thank you again and we'll see you next week. Bye.